going on, everybody? I got much. I ain't really got anything. Here's what it is. I was going to do a build, then I just got lazy. That's been better. I don't know why. I found a use for my Z-Max Mini. Put my Cardo tank on there. Now it's just huge. Let's get down to a bit of an issue. Now, I told you before on my sub tank, I uh, accidentally burnt out my head by going from my dripper to my sub tank and oops I forgot to turn it down. Insta burn, right? Told you all that. Well ever since then I've been having an issue with it uh, I throw it onto my Segeli. Let's see here if that'll stand up. Let's screw it on something else. I got this way too high. Hold on a second. But, uh, I screw it down to my Segeli. And uh, yeah, it's the version 1. So it's got the wonky pin, as everybody calls it. But everything I put on this device works just fine. We'll grab the old Nautilus. And that's got that weird springy pin on the Nautilus, right? And I'll put the weird Nautilus down. It's a one it says 1.6 ohm head on the box, but it's a 1.8. Every one of them I've ever gotten that said 1.6 has been 1.8. Now I'm gonna have to turn this way down. Because 10 watts is 4.2 volts. Okay. Now, if that shows up, it stays at 1.8. It doesn't move. I can readjust it. It'll be. I'm not even going to look at it. Let me get the glare out of there. It'll be at 1.8. It doesn't move. I'm going to vape it now. See the difference? Put that on there at 10 watts, right? This box is such a machine. Different things vape differently. I've said it before. It's my MVP, MVP guts in here, right? At 4.2 volts. Higher than that. It's not going to be the same. Doesn't even come close to even feeling the same. Wimpy. So, I don't know. Lately I've been using my MVP box as a uh, paperweight. What else are you going to do with it? So anyhow, back to the uh, Kanger sub tank. I burnt out the head, the head by uh, not turning it down after I used my dripper, right? So yeah, dummy me, whatever. So I got new heads in. And uh, the 1.2 ohm though, it didn't do it to. That's what I was using after I burnt out the 0.5 ohm head. But as soon as I got new 0.5 ohm heads, which read 0.7 on my uh, ohm meter, and usually read 0 0.6, 0 0.7 on uh, the Segeli, um, it would bounce around a lot, like uh, from. 0.03, so it wouldn't fire it, of course, or point, point 0.3, it would fire it, it would, like, be crazy, and, uh, it would go all the way up to 2.4, well, 
well at 2.4 ohms even at like 10 watts that's a lot of voltage getting pumped through there and uh, almost burnt this one out this is the the first head I grabbed out of the box and uh, it's still working I always catch it when I when I hear that but I put it on here now I got my pin up too far because I had I had my dripper on there. Let me put my pin down. So weird to have reverse threading on something, I tell you. It's just weird. Alright. Now, I got it to where it's not doing it anymore. And I'll tell you how I did it. And I'm hoping that they would change this, but I don't think they will. Um, yeah, 2.7 volts isn't going to be enough for me. Um, do do do. I only like this thing around 20 watts. This is 21.4. Very tasty. Now she'll swing between 0.6 to that 0.6 and she'll swing to 0.7 and really no matter what I do it'll stay now 0.6 0.7 it'll stay there no matter what I do now I fixed it how did I fix it well the spring that's inside there is removable. It's a pain in the butt, but you can push it out. The whole inner pin and spring. And what you're left with, oh, that's going to get dark real quick, huh? Is this pin right here that you can just pull right out of the bottom. I left mine together, see, I left it together, and you see, uh, I did this a little backwards because I didn't have a screw that fit the way I wanted it to, but I removed the uh, spring assembly and pin and all that that was in the middle, okay, so now I'm left with this weird hollow tube, right, that makes your positive connection. And uh, I found a screw that would fit on the inside of it to make it nice and solid. And I have it jutting out. A little more than I should, but it's jutting out. Right? Right. So, now, I think Kanger should take a uh, screw and put that a screw in the bottom of that pin instead to make it adjustable in and out instead of spring loaded because if you ever fire your vise a few times uh, at too high a wattage it basically messes up that spring that's inside there and the connection gets all messed up but now I have no problem Put it back down on here. Now, I do notice this though. This only comes up every once in a while. If I screw it down super tight, I get what is that low resistance. Well, now for some reason, it'll fix itself in a little bit, but uh, it said 0.5 there. But that'll go away. Yeah, it's back to point six. See? My other issue I've been having with this lately is an amazing amount of spit back. Now, I have Max VG juice in here, even though it don't look like it. Um, but it's a VG-based juice. 
with flavoring from uh, Gourmet Vapor. That's what's in here. And if I don't slipstream it, doesn't matter how many uh, holes I got open. But uh, if I don't slipstream it a little bit, if I just take a direct, you know, seal your lips around it, toot, it uh, it gives me spit back, and uh, I don't really care for that. If I just slipstream it a little. No spit back. Um, could be me just sucking too hard. I suck, I know it. Whatever. Make the jokes. But I highly enjoy when this works the way it's supposed to work. It's uh, much nicer when it works the way it's supposed to work. Another thing. I've been watching uh, weird builds and whatnot. Yeah, you got your Tiger wire and your Clapton wires. And I didn't readjust this before I tried to put this on. Um, I was trying out. I haven't hammered it out yet. But uh, I did make some, I'm going to call it Clapton wire. Let's call it Clapton wire. Are these mats lined up? Who knows? Who knows, man? Um, bump this up about 50. Yeah. Why do you seem loose? Why are you loose, man? Oh, you're juicy. You are juicy. Let me vape this a little bit and then I'll show you what I got in here. Why do you keep loosening? I think my Helios, the threads on it are a little eh. Super juicy right now. It's a little overfilled. But, uh, you know my original Helios, the center, the center uh, pin was all messed up for the uh, screw heads. So basically, I used my center pin right there as my fire button on my MVP. Yeah, so that's what happened to that. But uh, on this Helios, the uh, center likes to spin every now and then. And uh, I hope I fixed it. But uh, it's got that adjustable center post in there. However, every time I would loosen it up to make the connection longer, it uh, when I'd screw it down on my device, it would push my center post up. You know, where you put your build on. Well, that messes things up after a little while. So I would have to have it totally screwed down all the way. So if you're a car guy, you know those uh, aftermarket oil uh, gauges you can put in there from SunPro? Well, they have those little uh, brass bungs whatever you want to call them, uh, that hold the plastic line. Uh, they hold the plastic line into the gauge. They hold the plastic line onto your motor's block, engine block, whatever. And uh, I use one of those in there. So when I screw down the uh, screw in there, it would basically collapse that a little bit and push against the sides and hold it in there. And so far, so good. It's working fine. But I'm basically using my Segeli now. I really haven't, uh, really haven't been touching the 
Nemi too much. I used it a little last night. But, uh, yeah. I'm going to loose that uh, Helios is on here. I just think my threads are just getting old. I'll put my pin down a little bit farther. See if I can get her a little flusher. Just a wee, just a wee bit there. Let me vape this some more. Is it even touching? That's yeah, touching. That's good stuff. What am I vaping on? Give a little shout out here. This is what I'm vaping on. Right here. What I'm vaping on is myfreedomsmokes.com, right? Uh, TFA Strawberry. This is just strawberry flavoring. That's it. Ingredients natural and artificial flavored. Uh, strawberry. That's it. Right? Yeah, nice and runny. It's just flavoring. Mixed with VG, baby. 99.7% VG. There's no nicotine. I got no nicotine in here. That's it. And, uh, MyFreedomSmokes.com. Big old bottle of VG. And, uh, this is a 15 mil bottle of flavoring. I've made 90 mils so far with this, and uh, yeah, it looks like I barely touched it. 90 mils. Um, I could probably just mix that up, but that sounds time consuming. Uh, build that I got in here. I've been watching on people's builds lately, you know, whether it be Instagram or uh, Facebook or YouTube or whatever. Um, some guys have been having some good results with uh, spreading the coils out instead of uh, smooshing them down together. And I haven't done a build like that in a while, so I figured I got some wire that's twisted up in here. Let's try it out. And it is doing superbly well. Is it dry enough yet to show you? Yeah, I'm using the uh, using the Kanger tip on my Helios because I just think it looks good. It's working out well. That's at 50.2 watts. Still so juicy. Let's not drip this over anything. So, wipe the edge down a little bit. Spaced out, twisted. And it's not real mad. But it does the job. It's duels. Not real mad, but it does the job. Now, uh, my airflow holes on here are nowhere nowhere near wide enough to cover that whole coil when it's spaced out like that. And I can vape on that all day. No nicotine. This, this is a nice vape. Super smooth. Sigeli. Loving the Sigeli. I don't know. I had a cardo tank. I was listening to uh, Genie K's show 
uh, from the other day. I didn't listen to it all yet, but I listened to part of it. And uh, it's like, oh, I still have a cargo tank. And I was like, hey, I still got a cargo tank, too. It's just so strange to vape on, though. I don't miss how loud these are. They are. That's loud. Loud for me. I don't like them loud. I don't like my devices to sound like popcorn. I don't like them to whistle. Why they got to whistle? Why do they got to whistle? Even my kangaroo will whistle. What's up with that? Now, this thing, I don't forget what this is at. I think I have this thing set to tell me what it's at. 1.6. Not bad. doesn't quite look right on there just because of that weird bevel I wish wish that top was just flat it should just be flat this is at 1.8 10 watts Different things, man. Tell you different things. What's satisfying to you? I always end up doing a, a video like this. Everybody's always asking, well, what's wrong with this? Does this work? What about this? Oh, side note, I did notice uh, down at my local holiday gas station, um, they're selling ego kits down there now for like 30 bucks. Uh, like a 1100 mAh battery, um, a little Clearo. I don't have any of those anymore. Um, looks like a uh, looks like a iClear 16 or a, a CE4 or something like that. But it's got the bottom coils in there, not the top coils. Um, Thirty bucks. I'm like, I never thought I would see an Ego kit at the gas station. Everything in there, charger. Or a charger cable. I don't know if there's a wall plug in there, but the charge cable USB one is in there. It screws into the top, regular Ego style. Never thought I'd see that in the gas station. Just, you know, thought I'd just keep seeing Mark 10s and Blues and whatnot. That's something else. I don't know, man. Was playing with the old uh, Frogger. I like to call it the Frogger. So it always gets a little juicy when it sits. I don't know why. I think the old Frogger is at like 0.6 or 0.8. I don't remember. Let's see here. Juice everywhere. Juice, juice, juice. I need a drip tip. I was playing with this because this looks really cool on the Sigeli because my paint was coming off the Sigeli so I took it down you know I left that because that portion doesn't rub on anything because it's got an outer edge on it and I left by the buttons because I didn't want to play with there but I do have some scratching going on down here but all my my edges and my back panel and everything I put it in my pocket and just from going in and out of my jeans it was getting just wore out and scratched up in like two weeks really I don't know what this is at um, but 5.5 volts is gonna be a little bit too much for me um, get on to 26 watts that's 3.9 volts it's at 0.6 but 
it just looks neat. I uh, brushed the tip. What, what do you want to call it? I basically put the tip in my drill. This is the fogger's tip. And uh, put it in my drill and uh, just ran some uh, thousand grit sandpaper and gave it that brushed look. It's nice and smooth. Doesn't catch anything. Mm. That's got some uh, Vermilion River Classic Blend in there. I'm highly enjoying that. But it just looks cool on there. Look at that. Black and silver, black and silver all the way through. Look at that. Just matchy matchy. Also learned something yesterday. I don't know how far it goes. And I didn't know it. I'm in Minnesota. I didn't know it until I heard about it yesterday on Jeannie's show. Um, this whole thing in Minnesota, I guess, is is a tobacco item. What? Yeah. Everything for an e-cig is classified as a tobacco item. I didn't know that. What? Why? There's a battery box right here with a switch, but that's considered a uh, tobacco item. It doesn't make sense. This tank with no juice in it. You just you bought the tank. That's a tobacco item. Why? It's metal. There's no tobacco there. I don't get that. But I guess in Minnesota, Minnesota, eh? Yeah, the accent came out there for a second. Um, that's considered a tobacco item. I understand they want to treat the juice as a tobacco item because it has nicotine in it and the nicotine has been coming from tobacco plants okay whatever um, like to know when somebody's gonna start extracting nicotine from tomato plants because they'll probably make a killing they probably will because if you can get your nicotine uh, maybe at more of a premium price but if you can get it from tomato plants and not from tobacco um, that kind of crushes that doesn't it if your nicotine doesn't come from the tobacco plant it comes from a tomato plant well it can't be classified as tobacco because it came from a tomato so now you gotta do something with the tomato guys right right see that's one way around it I would think another way around it is I don't have no nicotine so how could that be a tobacco product tobacco's never even touched any of this but it is what it is uh, Dimitri threw out um, somebody else put out a study and he points out that you know they don't know what they're doing and the legislation isn't gonna look at how any of these tests are done they're just gonna look at the final report and go yep this is terrible um, we're gonna ban it everywhere because it's terrible look at the study it's terrible look at that everybody that's doing studies right now except for a couple of people don't know what they're doing just lighten it up like I did on that one video what did I do uh, 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 what did I call that temperature study check that out there's my temperature study I just let one light on fire that was their temperature study Highly enjoying that. 
I really got nothing new. I wanted to do build. I got lazy. I don't want to do a build. I'm at 30 minutes. Um, not, uh, not a version 1 MVP fan anymore. Um, not sure what I'm going to do with this. Not sure uh, what I'm going to do with the old H100 either. I was thinking, uh, I was almost thinking if somebody wanted it, but I would rather do some kind of uh, contest giveaway. And, uh, you know, you guys have seen this before. I've uh, brushed it down since, so it does look a little different than what you may remember. But, uh, yeah, that's all it is. And it's got that uh, adapter up on top because the original piece inside there sucks. Um, yeah, it's an H100. Clone of a clone. And uh, looks like brass. Brass tube on the top that was chrome plated and I uh, kind of polished that down. It does have, you know, wear and tear. It's got wear and tear on it. It's got a locking ring. Reverse threaded locking ring on there. Regular old push button. Does it work? Yeah, it works. Maybe, uh, you know, I hate to be that guy, but so I don't ask for likes or subscribers or anything like that. But uh, maybe if I ever hit uh, 200 subscribers, we'll say that. 200 subscribers. Let's adjust this. It's the only thing nice about a telescoping mod, man. You can do whatever you want with it. And I can include... I don't use my beauty rings anymore for my egos. But, uh... I could include the, uh... The old beauty ring on there. Barely even threads on there. And then it would look like that. Which looks a little funny. But, uh... Grab the fogger. Fogger's right here. Use the fogger. I'm just proving that it still works. No reason why it shouldn't work, right? It's just a mech mod. No adjustability up on top. So uh, you can see some things will have a little gap. And uh, that's the only reason I use these uh, beauty rings. Use the beauty ring. Go up a little bit and it's gone. Uh, still fun so uh, I guess I'll say it if if I hit 200 subscribers whenever that may be it might be a year from now the way my subscriber rate goes but if I hit 200 subscribers I'll give away that old H100 um, maybe you don't want it don't subscribe. I don't. Whatever, man. I'm not worried about it. It's just sitting in my box. Maybe, uh, maybe all you've got is uh, egos, or you know, an old MVP or something, and you kind of want to take a look at a mod, but you don't want to go buy a mod. I win a mod. 200 subscribers. I'll give the mod away. I'm not using it. I'm barely using my Nemi's. It hits good. How does it hit with uh, a dripper? I don't know. I've been coiling my drippers for uh, the Segeli, basically. So I don't even know what it's going to look like on here. Let's uh, put the old Helios on here. Yeah, my threads are going on my Helios. Whatever. It's Now it's a little dinky thing. Nothing wrong with that. Point two build. 
according to the Segeli, it's .2 build. Um, what is it really? Yeah, these threads are terrible on my Helios. To wrap them in some aluminum foil or something. Um, geez, I don't even think that's touching. It's not even touching. I swear the uh, center part of my box keeps moving. Let's bring it up. It's almost like having an old ego with this thing, I tell you. Point two five. So it's reading point two on the Segeli. I gotta tell you, I've never had a problem with the uh, the old uh, H one hundred. The old H100, I've never had a hot button on it like I have on my Nemesis. Never got a short from it to my hand like I have on the Nemesis. There it is. The H100, proving that it still works. 200 subscribers, you can have it. Yes, you can. You can even take it. I can show you this. So, 18650 battery, right? Doesn't matter, nipple top, flat top, whatever. 18350. You 18350 user. You just telescope this baby down. Lots of screwing. Do, 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 do. and it becomes a very nice stealth device that's how I check how far I have to go if I screw it a little bit I push the button and if the button doesn't go all the way down I'm good now it's this big that's it it's a aluminum tube that was green I brushed that out too with some sandpaper left the inserts green upper ring there is green it's just a little tiny, tiny thing, man. Does it work in 18350 mode? I'll show you that too. Yeah, what the heck. I'm sitting here. I ain't doing nothing. It's so weird to use when it's this small. I mean, that's it. I didn't have a use for that. Stupid little 18350 battery anymore. But uh, ever since I got the extension tube for the Z Max, so I could put a real battery in it. Just like this, I hit 200 subscribers, I'll do a giveaway. How about that? Whenever that happens, two years, seven years from now, whatever. The way my channel goes, it'll probably be about three years. But uh, there it is. It's going back in the box. In the box. In the box. What else you got? Hmm? I had to put up a video, even though I've got nothing new. Um, I did notice, and if anybody knows, because I haven't found them on any sites, there are. Oh, I got juice all over. My kanger leaking? No way. From where? There's no place for it to leak from. Coming out the airflow. Why? Oh, kanger. Why must you give me problems? It's not really a problem. I mean... Whatever. Kanger, kanger, kanger. Um... What was I saying? Oh, if anybody sees them, I looked, but I could not find them. What is he talking about? What is that guy talking about? What did I do with the drip tip for this? Oh, I was using, I was using on the fogger. Fogger. I've seen some uh, 
two post. Wow, do I want to vape that at 26 watts? No, I don't. I'll turn it down a little bit. Um, two post Addies. I've been waiting. I knew someone was going to build them, and I've seen two different kinds, but can't find a website. I saw them on Instagram, both of them. Um, one, I don't really care for the ones that, uh, I like them just like, you know, like my regular ones, like the CLT, like the Helios, where the airflow just comes in the side, goes straight up. Not the ones that come in from the bottom of the deck and go up and hit underneath the coils. I just want them to hit the sides. But, uh, two post addies, where there's just a positive and negative right in the middle. So it's easy to do a center build. You don't have to monkey with your wires. You just coil it up, throw it in there. It's automatically centered. You don't have to go like that. Why would you want to do that? Awesome. Um, but I don't know where I can get them. And I don't know how much they are. So if they're way too much, there's no way. Wish I had a center pin for my uh, other Helios. This Helios is, won't fit in here. It's too darn small. This is a, uh, oh, what equivalates to an EH Pro um, Helios. And, uh, sorry, Fogger. And, uh, you know, yeah, it says VHO on there, but it's the Mini. I mean, this thing's dinky. It's not 22 millimeters, it's like 20 or something like that. It's small. You still run a K-Fun? Yeah, I got my K-Fun, but... The Kanger, the Kanger here has taken over the K-Fun spot just because... It does that every time. Better than my fogger. Yeah. The Kanger. Better than my fogger. However, out of the fogger, it has that dual coil in there. So it gets a harder hit. And uh, there's a parallel build in my k fun There's nothing I can put that on except for this. I don't have anything else going on. I'm going to lay you on your side again. I want to see if you leak again. I don't know why. Why would you leak? You like the... Uh, my cape one's at 0.8. But it's a mouth-hitting device. Yeah, I'll tailpipe it. Gorgor, I know you don't like the uh, term there, tailpipe. Slipstream it, but then it burns. My k fun is set up for mouth hits. Yeah, well, it can take a drip tip off of there. Why you don't like the uh, term tailpipe in there, Gorgor Brittany? Gorgor Brittany. She doesn't like the term tailpipe in it. That's more like a tailpipe, really. Um, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't even think uh, I got my CLT over here. Still loving the CLT. I think I got it over on the desk. But, uh, it's beautiful. Well, listen to me ramble for 45 minutes now. Um, what do you got? What do you want to know? Told you about the center pin issue. Are you leaking yet? No, nope, nothing. See, just the rare opportunity there of it leaking. I don't know why I did it. Maybe I pulled too hard on it before and it just came out the airflow. Whatever.
it is what it is. I don't have the airflow wide open, so when I pull too hard on it, it can happen. Now it's wide open. Oh, the other thing I noticed on here, anybody's got one of these. Have you noticed that when you open it to its widest setting, um, you have these three, the three air holes on the ring, right? Behind the ring is just a big slot where everywhere else, you, you, you won't be able to see it on my camera, so why would I bother doing that? But uh, you got the three air, air holes, and it's a slot behind the widest airflow. Um, and I still don't understand why they did it the way they did it. If I've got these three air holes here, and you put this big slot in on this side, well, if you wanted to turn it down, why wouldn't you just make it a little adjustment? Why would you drill two holes over here and then turn it again and drill another hole over here? Why would you do that? That's uh, excessive machining. You already have the three, three air holes on the ring and a giant slot right there. Why wouldn't you get it so you could just doop, doop, and that's it. Just turn it down or turn it back up. And that's it. This is extra machining that didn't need to be done and probably went into uh, raising the price of that up to where it is. Just saying. Stop drilling the extra holes. Just use the widest airflow right there and be able to turn your ring to adjust where you want it over that big old slot behind there. And then take your center pin and take that goofy spring-loaded thing out of there and put an adjustable screw in there and uh... wow you would really have something So i'm not having any issues whatsoever with this with my pin being nice and solid as i did when there was a spring in there just saying so uh... you do that that would be greatly appreciated that and widen out that goofy uh, airflow you got going on on that rebuild deck because that's uh, yeah it's a little airier than my K fun but not much and uh, it's nowhere near even if you put the sub tank on one hole only that one hole is still bigger than the airflow that you can actually get through that rebuild deck. Um, just nonsense, man. Nonsense. The old, the old Cardo. Cardo is what got me off smoking, man. The other stuff that came out after the Cardo made sure I wasn't going back like this guy the Nautilus um, the Nautilus Mini is really nice too if you want a smaller look smaller capacity everybody everybody knocking that sub tank for being 25 mil you know what it holds 5 mil of juice like that what's it's not flushy flushy what does it need to be flushed for? It looks good enough. It only overhangs a little bit. What's what's the big deal? What's the big deal? People that go out and they buy this goofy Z-Max Mini that nothing looks good on. I mean, you know, I got these old things. I don't look good on there. I don't look good. Look at that. Flat, curved. I don't look good. It still works, still functions. Doesn't look good. Still works and functions. Got anything else in your box? We'll we'll do a quick uh, look in the box. Oh, my RSST tipped over. There's juice everywhere. Why would you do that, RSST? Ew. But uh, no, I got nothing else. Oh, I do have the CLT over here. Did you rock that a couple times for you? Let's rock that a couple times for you. Love the CLT. What kind of build do you got in that CLT? I don't know. What do I got in the CLT? Well, 
I got uh, that regular parallel. Let's vape it first. We'll dry it out a little bit. At point three, rocker up to fifty. Strawberry in here too. Ah, that's awesome. I'm gonna tell you how to mix your flavoring, but just a regular, regular old strawberry like what I got here. I put one drop to every mill. Okay. So I put 30 drops of this, add it to a base bottle, and fill it up the rest of the way with BG. Warm it up and shake it up. I just warm it up under the tap a little bit. Makes it a little runnier. Makes it easier to mix. Like that. Is that how we do that now? Hmm? Do they have the camera farther distance away? And I usually have it. Duh. Let me see here. No, it's twisted. Oh, you know what's in here? Three strands of 28 gauge. Twisted. Very nicely. My coils are really black. But uh, they're twisted up nice and even. It's awesome. And uh, three separate wires. Twisted. And... Uh, yeah, it makes a really nice. You be able to see, you can't even see that. But it makes a nice little pissed off device. And uh it's uh beautiful. It's beautiful and I like it. And that's all that matters is if I like it because I'm the one that's vaping it. Vape what you like. Always gotta I never use the whole airflow on my CLT. It's cut. It's cut down. See that? It's cut down. Almost half. You only need as much airflow as the coil can take. And I get plenty of flavor. I get a little bit more flavor if I just use that mini hole. You see that little, little tiny, can you even see it? Little tiny, tiny hole? I get almost as much vapor. It's a much tighter draw though. That's what I got for you today, you know. I got nothing new. A couple of gripes, a couple of complaints. My fogger's leaking now. What the heck's going on around here? It's one of the other things. When you vape your devices and uh that causes them to warm up, right? So if you immediately lay them down after you vaped them, well, they're warm. So it's still expanding in there. So it just comes out your airflow holes. It happens. It is what it is. Reminder again, it is cold right now. Up here it is. And my light's really changing. Look at that. Um, so, you take your devices outside, and you notice they're not quite vaping like they should, and then you go inside, and they're leaking all over the place. Hot, expands, cold, contracts. Okay? Okay? You all understand that now? Oh, I put that together. I can't do that. Put you back up in here. Anywho, I was thinking about taking the bike out today. It's supposed to be like 37, but, uh... It was snowing like an hour ago, so that ain't happening. You all have fun now, because I know I will.